Maybe you're becoming more aware of cold-related therapies, cryotherapy, cold plunge. Maybe you've come across sauna or steam and you're interested in how to best apply these temperature-related therapies. Well, what I'd like to do is talk about contrast therapy, meaning contrast, let's say cold versus hot as one example. There's other ways to contrast therapies, but how do we look at contrast therapies? How do we look at these temperature-regulating therapies? And how do we make sure you're getting the most out of it and you're not pushing yourself too hard? We need to look at those therapies through the hormetic lens. This is video four of a series on hormesis. If you missed the first video on what hormesis is, please take the time to watch that first video and really get a broader understanding of stress, the different types of stress, how stress affects our life, how stress is entering the conversation of hormesis, and next, how to start applying hormesis to all these different categories so we can better understand how to keep people safe, make it effective, and make sure that we're improving health over time, not breaking us down over time. So today is video four, looking through the hormetic lens, and we're looking specifically at contrast therapies. I'm gonna start the contrast therapy conversation with temperature contrast. Let's say cold therapies versus hot therapies. There's enormous amounts of information out there on the benefits of these therapies, the consequences of these therapies, when you should do them, why you should do them. For all of that information, please take a look at the benefits of sauna, the benefits of steam, the benefits of cryo, the benefits of ice bath as examples. Today, what we're focusing on, not necessarily just the benefit of the individual therapy, but how to best apply these therapies into a process and a protocol. Again, making sure that it's not only safe, but it's also effective and that we're improving your health over time. So as we begin this conversation, what I'd like you to do is picture a continuum. And in this specific case, I want you to picture on one end of that continuum is cold therapies and as cold as you can be or as cold as we can make it. On the far end of the other side is heat therapies and as hot as we can make it. And let's just say that your body temperature or your ability to maintain your body temperature is right in the middle. And so as we expose ourselves to cold therapy, our body temperature moves in that direction. And as we come back to some baseline temperature, it moves back to homeostasis or back to the middle. As you're exposed to some sort of heat therapy, your body temperature increases. As you leave that sauna as an example and come back to baseline temperature, your body temperature starts to move back to the baseline. That's how normal physiology works. And our autonomic nervous system very specifically is what's regulating body temperature even in the face of these therapies. Now, a lot of the benefits that come from these therapies come from your autonomic nervous system's ability to manage, adapt, and shift blood flow around in order to compensate for this external temperature that's acting on your body. So now the question becomes, how do we use cold therapies and how do we use heat therapies to improve our health? The answer is, ultimately, it really just depends how strong and resilient you already are which is why this conversation has to go back to the hormesis conversation. Different people are gonna be able to handle different amounts of contrast therapies. And just because one or the other may be good for us, it doesn't mean pushing them to the extremes as hard and as fast as we can is gonna help us. And in fact, in many cases, we're pushing too hard and too fast or too much of a difference from one side of the temperature regulation to the other side of the temperature regulation without allowing our body to adapt, which is gonna push us so far down the hormetic curve, we're gonna end up in either where the diminishing return happens to be, or worse yet, down at a place where we're actually doing more damage than good. We certainly don't wanna find ourselves in that position. So how do we determine where you should be? Well, the first question is to me, how well do you tolerate temperature change as it is? In other words, how affected are you already when the temperature regulation is out of your control? In other words, you're in an office building that's air conditioned. Can you keep yourself warm? Or are you freezing cold and needing a jacket at work just to stay warm? Or are you putting a space heater under your desk in order to warm your space because the external temperature is too cold? Or when you go to a movie theater, are you bringing a sweatshirt, a blanket, and a hat just because you know you're gonna need those things in order to stay warm during the movie? What does that tell us? That tells us that when the external temperature gets cool, your body's already struggling to improve and maintain 
blood flow and to improve and increase your body temperature to regulate that against the external environment. If that's the case, going into an extreme cold therapy like cryotherapy or a cold bath may not be your best bet. You need to build your cold muscle, if you will, by exposing yourself purposefully and systematically to different amounts and different frequencies of cold in order to allow yourself to be exposed and then recover, be exposed and then recover. And as long as you do that through a series of challenges, you can improve your nervous system's ability to handle that and improve your ability to regulate it. How about on the flip side? You're somebody that goes into a sauna, you know, spends 20 to 40 minutes in the sauna, you're sweating, you get out of the sauna, you go take a shower, you try to cool off, you run some cold water in that shower, you go into the locker room or you're at home, you get dressed, you get in the car a half hour later, 45 minutes later, an hour and a half later, you're still sweating. Your body's just not getting back to baseline temperature. You were exposed to a heat-related therapy. You got a good sweat going in that. You got all the benefits of detox and heat shock proteins. You're doing well. You did something great for yourself today. And at the same time, you take a shower, you try to cool off, you're in your car, it's air conditioning, and you're sweating on your way home. You're not able to re-regulate your body temperature through the autonomic nervous system after that heat exposure. That tells me that you did either too much or for too long of a period of time, and now you've exceeded your body's ability to come back to baseline. Now, there's a very fine line because if you listen to any of the other Cormetic videos, you understand that if we're not pushing the envelope, then we're not getting any response. So I'm not telling you to find that edge and push a little bit beyond it. I'm telling you that you need to do that. But what I am also telling you is that you need to be careful about how far beyond that line you push to prove that your body can then heal, balance, and then re-regulate back to baseline. That's what we're looking for. If we can live in that window, you are living in the hormetic curve. And not only is that safe, that's going to expand your capacity to become more resilient to changes in temperature. And it's going to build your health for the rest of your life, not break you down. But if you're pushing those barriers too far, then you're doing more damage than good. And that's not the goal that most of us have when we're going and using our time and our money and our resources to exposing ourselves to these therapies. So let's go back to the continuum for a moment. Let's say you're right in the middle, you're right at baseline. You expose yourself to some amount of cold, you get back out, you give yourself time, you come back to baseline, feels pretty good, okay? Next time, if that all went well, next time you can push the envelope. You could either make it a little colder or you could stay a little longer. But should you challenge temperature and duration simultaneously? My opinion, probably not. Or if you are, in smaller increments. You test the temperature, you test the duration, you give yourself time to recover. It should be uncomfortable. Cold sessions are typically uncomfortable. That's okay. But you shouldn't be screaming in pain and you should be able to re-regulate. And if you keep exposing yourself to increased cold and or increasing duration, within each session, they're getting continuously more uncomfortable and you are getting yourself back to baseline in a reasonable time. And generally speaking, you feel good. That's exactly what we're looking for. Same thing on the heat side. A little bit of heat, let yourself regulate. A little bit more heat, let yourself regulate. A more heat for a longer period of time, let yourself re-regulate. If you're seeing regulation is coming back in order and you're improving over time, that means you are functioning under the hormetic umbrella. Now, some people love the contrast therapy so much that they go into the cold and then immediately into the hot or into the hot and then immediately into the cold. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is if you can barely go into the cold and then re-regulate or go into the heat and then re-regulate, what makes you think that going from as hot as you can to as cold as you can would be a good idea? If you can't go in one direction and get back to the midline, you shouldn't be swinging from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other end of the spectrum without giving yourself a chance to re-regulate in the middle. And so I think these therapies are amazing. I use them all the time. I recommend them to most people. All I'm trying to do is give you a framework to understand how cold you should go, how hot you should go, and when it's appropriate to start bouncing in between extremes and doing it safely and effectively. So if you're just getting started, 
The idea is expose yourself to colds and then give yourself time to re-regulate and expand in one direction first. Once you feel pretty good about that, you can keep it and then you could start playing with heat as an example and expand heat in terms of temperature and duration and make sure you can go in both directions individually and you can improve your health, you could feel good, you can get the benefits and you could re-regulate. Now you know you can go in both directions and you're pretty resilient, you're pretty strong. And now you can start ping-ponging between the two different heat and cold therapies. But again, you wouldn't start that by going right to the hottest thing you've ever done all the way to the coldest thing you've ever done. Now you're swinging further in that spectrum. You're skipping the re-regulation step, in which case you want to bring those ends in a little bit and start doing a new test in terms of how far you're allowing that pendulum to swing. So what you want to do is you want to bring in the extremes of temperature a little bit because now you're skipping that middle step. And so as you swing into heat and swing into cold, those swings are going to be a little bit smaller at first, and then they can expand over time. As long as you're noticing that your health is improving, your immune system's improving, sleep is improving, your heart rate variability is improving, your ability to regulate extreme temperatures is improving you can keep expanding that pendulum. The moment that you start to notice that sleep is starting to slip, your energy levels are slipping, your immune system is starting to tank, your ability to regulate external environments is starting to change, you may be starting to exceed that body's tolerance. So what you wanna really do when you're creating protocols and plans, whether it's for yourself or for your clients or for your patients, you wanna have a really firm understanding of these other signs and symptoms of health and make sure as you're challenging someone's system that you're not seeing any of them decline and that you're seeing all of them expand. That's how you know you're functioning under the hormetic umbrella and that you're improving somebody's health over the long haul. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit better how to start incorporating temperature regulating therapies into a program and a plan and how to view those therapies through the hormetic lens. We'll see you on the next video where we'll start to talk about different therapies and how to also view those therapies through the same lens. So again, if you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, please, please, please take a look at those videos because they're really building a foundation of understanding and subscribe to our channel to make sure that you're notified for the next upcoming few videos to finish this series out. We'll see you next time.